Good evening. My name is Nils Jensen. I'm the mayor, and I'm going to be sitting in tonight in the chair, and Councillor Nay sends her regrets. Typically, the acting mayor um, does the uh, chairing of, of the Committee of the Whole. This is the, uh, a regular meeting of the Committee of the Whole. And before we start, though, I want to uh, acknowledge that we're on the land uh, uh, on which we gather tonight. Uh, these are the traditional territories of the coast and Strait Salish peoples. Uh, and we recognize the Lekwungen speaking uh, people who are now known today as the Songhees and the Esquimalt uh, nations. And we recognize their historical connection uh, to uh, these lands where we gather uh, continue to this day. Also to advise you that uh, we are being videoed. Uh, these, the videos are archived and, um, and, the, and the camera is at the back. So as you come to the table, the, your back will be uh, <laughs> on video. Um, and other than that, um, yeah, thank you very much everyone for coming. I call the meeting to order. We have an agenda. We don't need to approve it. Or, uh, we can just start on it. The first uh, is, a, um, uh, is a group, a grade five students who wish to address us on uh, the issue of uh, coalition of municipalities against racism. I'm going to introduce them in a minute. These are students from Glenline Norfolk uh, Junior School on uh, Beach Drive. They're in attendance here, and, and it's recommended that we have a motion as follows, that a presentation be heard by the Glen Lyon Norfolk School students on their uh, findings regarding the Canadian Coalition of Municipalities Against Racism. Can someone move that, please? Move, seconded. Discussion. You're not, you're not, yes, we are. We're at, on, the, on the job. The microphones are not working. I see. Okay, that's right, there's no, uh, well. I think the, the technician has been called and I see him walking towards chambers now. Here we go, it's you, welcome. Um, it seems to me I'm the only one uh, who's working. Oh, and there's, uh, there's, it uh, starts here and goes that way. So there we go. It was the there mayor's fault. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than a loose connection, I think. My connections may be loose, but they're numerous. All right. So we have a motion on the floor, uh, which is to uh, invite the presentation, discussion, all in favor, opposed, none opposed, it's unanimous. So I'm going to uh, call forward the three students. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the first one is Alim Carino, if you would come forward and take a seat, and who's gonna speak to us first, and then uh, Peyton Stobie, uh, if you wouldn't mind coming forward. And then last, Sarang Constantinescu. <laughs> They're accompanied by very proud parents. And also, uh, there, uh, there's two teachers from Glen Nine Norfolk. Uh, they're a homeroom, uh, home form teacher. From, they're all in grade five. That's Sarah Wallace. Ms. Wallace, could uh, you just think, yes, you're, you're back there. And then Gavin Bowers, also a teacher who is a mentor for their exhibition uh, that they've put together. So uh, I understand that uh, um, uh, Aleem will start, Peyton will be second, and then Sarang will speak to us. And uh, <laughs> Aleem, if you would pull the microphone fairly close to you, so it's about two centimeters away. There you go. And welcome to all three of you. Uh, and uh, we invite you to make your presentation, Aleem. Good evening, Mayor Jensen and members of council. My name is Peyton Stobie. I am Sarang Constantinescu. And I am Aleem Carino, and we are grade five students at Glen Lyon Norfolk Junior School. For our International Baccalaureate Exhibition Project, we chose the issue of discrimination against immigrants. Through our research and, and understanding on this topic, we found that discrimination can affect the mental health of, of an individual, that refugees are discriminated against, 
and the discrimination can affect the community. Recently, we presented our findings during our exhibition presentation on May the 3rd on the central idea of the interconnectedness of our global community is influenced by events that lead to new understandings. We feel strongly that we need to address this issue. Therefore, we are here this evening to propose the idea that Oak Bay Municipality joins the Canadian Coalition of Municipalities Against Racism and Discrimination. We understand that Oak Bay is part of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and we hope that, hope that the Municipality of Oak Bay will take a lead role in helping this bring awareness to this issue. Why should you do this, you may ask? You are elected by the community to lead by example. You can protect the citizens of Oak Bay from racism and discrimination. You have the influence to make a difference in the community, and this is what we ask of you. The benefits of joining the coalition are you will promote culture and community richness through diversity. By taking this action, the council will benefit by having the satisfaction of doing the right thing and join an improved economy and happier and healthier community both physically and mentally. We hope that you will consider and then act upon this suggestion. We would like to thank you for your time. Thank you very much for that. Uh, and uh, it's a very timely um, study that you've engaged in here with respect to uh, racism. Uh, we unfortunately are seeing uh, prejudice and racism on the increase in, in many parts of the world, and I think we all have to uh, take a stand. Uh, I can tell you my own experience. Uh, I came over as an immigrant, not as a refugee, but as an immigrant to Canada when I was seven years old. And I uh, only experienced a little bit of resistance, but by and large, I was opened with wel I was welcomed with open arms to Canada when we moved to uh, Montreal. So I know how important it is to make people feel at home in our country, uh, regardless of where they're from and uh, regardless of what their background is. So the fact that you've uh, uh, entered into this research and made the presentation and also had that exhibition you mentioned just very recently is, is very good and it's a great thing for our community. And I want to thank you for that personally. We have, a, we have an agenda tonight that that issue is not on the agenda, but I can uh, tell you we will reflect on what you have to say. Uh, I know when I first became mayor, uh, I became a member of the Mayors for a Nuclear Free World, uh, for a, uh, a nuclear weapon free world. So we do have taken stands like that uh, and uh, uh, we want to thank you very much for bringing this to our attention. So if you just stay there for a minute, I'm going to come around and give you something. Because I noticed you're all in the International Baccalaureate Program, correct? And if you just point to the little buttons that shows, that's right. Now I want you to point to the button that shows that you came here from to Oak Bay. Is it not on there? Okay. So just stay there for a minute. Those are limited edition pens. And uh, anyways, it's uh, it's great to have you, uh, the three young young men, come and address us. And when we hear these kind of things from your generation, it gives us all hope. Thank you. So, 
So now you're you're free to stay and participate in the uh, in the discussions about zoning and variances. Uh, but I'm going to leave that to your parents, uh, whether or not that you have other things to do. So thank you very much for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the second item on our agenda tonight is Parks, Recreation and Culture. We have our uh, director of, of uh, uh, the, um, the department here, yes, joining us now. Welcome, Mr. Herman. Uh, we have um, a minutes of the May 3rd meeting and uh, we also have um, a, uh, to adopt their meetings, uh, minutes and uh, their, the resolutions contained therein. In particular, I think the resolution that one of the resolutions is in there is to uh, uh, approve, I'll just pull it up here on my iPad, uh, approve the, uh, this year's um, uh, Arts Alive installations. But I think that's the, really the, only, the, the main one, is that correct, Mr. Herman? Uh, resolution. Thank you, Your Worship. The, uh, the other items there were uh, relatively minor. There was a, a event approval and there was a delegation okay. at the meeting, but that was the main. Okay. Thing. Now, is there anything you want to highlight in particular uh, for us that we need to know and focus on? Uh, I, will, I will note that uh, Ken Olson, who I think Council knows as our uh, our energy coordinator for the municipality and, and previous uh, staff member did make his annual appearance before the commission and, and his uh, report was very well received again and, and we're looking forward to have him come to a future um, committee to whole okay. uh, to do his presentation for council once again. Well, I, we'd, we'd welcome that, that's for sure. Because he's done so much in terms of reducing our municipal greenhouse gases uh, over the years in our energy consumption. Okay, so if, um, any questions of Mr. Herman on the minutes or the, any of the resolutions contained therein? Okay. I'll so make yes. a motion that, oh, do you have a question? Sorry. I'll, I'll make a motion that the minutes of the meeting of the Oak Bay Parks and Rec Second. Culture Commission be recommended. Thank you. All right, and while you're thinking about it, uh, Councillor Kirby, with your questions, I can just update you a little bit on uh, uh, on the Arts Alive installations. Uh, we were uh, invited, um, myself, the Arts Laureate, and the liaison to University of Victoria. We were invited to speak to uh, uni the university, uh, Janet Barkley, uh, the uh, the manager in your uh, in, in your department, uh, Mr. Hermans, uh, joined us. And we met with uh, the liaison, the UVic liaison, and two vice presidents, just to discuss uh, the installation that's going to be going in at the uh, intersection of Cedar Hill Cross and Henderson. Uh, this location, uh, the length of time it was going to be there, was discussed, and uh, what uh, you know, we also addressed um, the uh, the issue of what the whole idea of having these installations was. We looked at uh, and discussed some other uh, uh, potential uh, locations, um, but it was a very cordial meeting and uh, I think they get, gave them a better understanding of what this program's about. So I uh, think, okay, now, Councillor Kirby, having, having uh, tread some water here on your behalf, have you got the question? Thank you. Um, I just, I, two things. Um, just wanted to uh, thank your staff for coming out and volunteering on Saturday. There were three members of, our, of the Oak Bay staff that participated in the cleanup of the um, Cadbury Bay Beach, um, the Oak Bay side there. They had uh, used some the district tractor and trailer, uh, and but, but that was uh, an enormous help. and. Um, made the, the cleanup possible um, because things were very, the, the bags of sand removed that were, were very heavy. But anyways, I just really appreciated them being there and showing such leadership and doing it on their own time was especially, uh, um, you know, just awesome leadership. And also the other thing was the, the swing 
uh, reappeared this weekend in time for Mother's Day, and uh, I noticed on social media there was a lot of uptake about that and, and a lot of excitement and a lot of concern when it disappeared, um, but um, and but that it was returned so quickly, um, given I and now I understand why that there was some vandalism, but um, unfortunately, um, but that the, just that the staff's responsiveness is so awesome. Um, my question is about the uh, program for the with ladybugs um, and aphidites. There's seventy thousand ladybugs and aphidites used to control aphids and the sticky honeydew um, they create. And I d I'm just wondering if that is that is that a new program? Uh, through the chair, the uh, the manager of parks has undertaken that work at least for a couple of years previous to this that I'm aware of. It's just a very cool program. So as soon as I saw it once in Victoria, I saw them releasing them, and uh, it's just the neatest thing to see. So I was just really excited to see that they're using that as an alternative to pesticides and or chemical warfare. So thank you. Um, that's very interesting and really cool. Thank you. Uh, just to pick up on on the two points that you had mentioned, one was Cadboro uh, Beach, and uh, uh, we had three people out uh, from uh, our uh, the Parks Department and. Uh, they helped collect 4.12 or 4.5 almost, I'm told, uh, tons of material. So it was uh, a really a, an excellent program. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Zelka, please. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, uh, related again to the uh, Cadbury Bay Beach cleanup, uh, Tim Roberts in particular uh, was, the, uh, was the driver of the, um, of the Oak Bay vehicle that was dragging all of that material. And he did such a fabulous job. So I just wanted to, to uh, shout out to him uh, through you. Uh, that would be fantastic. If you could uh, pass along, um, certainly uh, my, uh, my thanks, and ideally all of our, our thanks. That would be great. Um, I wanted to uh, also uh, compliment uh, the uh, Parks, Rec, and Culture um, for bringing forward, I think it was item, item eight, uh, I guess the top of page three, with respect to the community amenity policies um, uh, with a suggestion um, on asking staff to work with uh, with with, uh, with the um, commission to bring forward a community amenity policies as uh, such a policy would support parks recreation and culture as mentioned in the minutes uh, i definitely highly support that and i uh, wanted to ask um uh, staff if i may chair through you uh, whether um, uh, um uh, this would be an opportunity for um, maybe also the uh, parks uh, excuse me the uh, the other commission um, the advisory planning commission to possibly also get involved in uh, helping to either devise a separate or maybe a similar community many policies from that perspective. I'm not sure which staff is best. Mr. Jones, are you be in the best position to answer that? Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the, the plan is to have <coughs> staff from all departments come together to, uh, to work out a project scope for that particular piece of work, and we would anticipate bringing that forward to Council for uh, consideration of how we plan to proceed. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Any other points? Sure. Okay, I'm going to call. We have a motion on the floor to uh, uh, adopt or receive the report. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Hearn. And we move on to item number three, and we have, uh, oh, just bear with me. Uh, the next items from three through seven have to do with land use applications. The first one is at 167 Barclay Terrace. Uh, is the applicant here? If you come to the, the front microphone, please. And uh, you know the routine to uh, just to fill out your name there and uh, on that form. Thank you. Um, I think what we need is a, a bit of an update where we were. This has been before us bef uh, in a previous occasion. And uh, there was a motion made, which we have here, an excerpt. Uh, in our materials from the 18th of April, and, uh, and that was that further consideration uh, of the application be deferred to allow the applicant provide plans depicting the deck uh, at the extent to which it had been previously constructed. So Ms. Jensen, can you update us as to what's happened between the 18th of April and tonight? Thank you. Certainly. As you mentioned, uh, Committee of Whole considered this application at their April 18th meeting, which is a rezoning application to allow for increased <coughs> floor area and lot coverage to legalize the existing deck. 
uh, there was discussion at that meeting about realigning the deck to reflect what had previously been uh, in, in existence. So the applicant has come back with a modified version of the deck that would take it further to the interior of the lot rather than along the, the side of the house as it is now. That does result in reducing the proposed lot coverage from 32.74 down to 32.16%. It also reduces the floor area ratio down from 0.432 to 0.421. So, um, uh, Mr. Collins, welcome. Um, do you have anything to add in terms of what's transpired between then and now and what's attempted to be uh, uh, achieved here? Yes. Um, <clears throat> what happened is after the last meeting, I arranged to meet with the neighbors that had sent their letter in that were opposing this and sat down with them and found out what it was about the deck that was really offensive to them. And they said it was just, an, and I sat in their house and I could see what they were talking about. Um, that extra four feet of extension really looked right back into their windows. So we discussed, it, I said, look, if we were to cut that back off and in a straight line with the house and then put up a, a screen of some kind, would you agree to that? And they said if the screen were to be made of glass and to let the light come through, they didn't want it to be some kind of a, a wall. Um, and they also asked if my cl uh, other clients would agree to register a covenant on the property that that would have to remain as a screen, and they have agreed to that. So now I have a, a letter, I think I've had it sent forward to you, that says that, um, that we've viewed the proposed alterations to the deck at 167 Barclay Terrace and are now in support of the rezoning application. The Dunlops have agreed to cut their deck about four feet and erect a privacy screen of opaque glass six feet tall that will both allow light through but protect the privacy of both homes. They have also agreed to register a legal covenant to prevent the screen from being removed in the future. So um, Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Hewitt have agreed with that and my clients have agreed to it. And so now there's no opposition from neighbors to the, to the deck as it stands now as, as we're presenting it. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see if, uh, well, I, I have a question from Ms. Jensen to begin with, and, uh, and that has to do with we, the initial application was before the APC, the Advisory Planning Commission, and they recommended denial. And have they had a chance to have a look at this a second time with this new proposal? No, they have not. Okay. You also, in your original 18th of April, uh, report that we had recommended a denial of this application. What uh, are your uh, thoughts now in terms of how this has uh, uh, impacted um, this? Because I see in your, your report now, staff continue to recommend the application be denied. That is correct. Um, with all due respect to the to the applicant and working with the neighbors who had concerns about the the siting and the privacy issues, uh, staff still have concerns uh, as in was indicated by the advisory planning commission as well, regarding setting a precedent for um, other homes in the community who may be looking to increase, albeit moderately, uh, the floor area or the lot coverage on their site. Uh, currently, the RS5 is the um, smallest. Uh, lot size that we have uh, sitting at 0.4 um, floor area ratio and we are routinely getting um, inquiries at the counter asking for additional floor area on top of that. Uh, just to dig down a little on that point, are these for new residences? Not necessarily. Okay. Some are additions to existing residences. All right, because this is a case of trying to replace a, uh, a deck more or less the way it was before. That is correct. Uh, and as indicated in the memo I submitted to council, this is in fact a deck that was not approved to begin with. The original uh, design of the home allowed for a much smaller deck that was located in the central portion of the home. So at some point that deck, uh, we don't know when, at some point that deck was expanded to, to what it was previous to the 2016 renovation. I see, all right. Now, let's see if there's questions of either the applicant or Ms. Jensen at this point, and then we'll, I'll entertain a motion once we've had the questions all responded to. Councillor Zelka, question first. 
Thank you so much, Chair. I wanted to confirm uh, this deck will not have stairs um, uh, uh, extending down. Uh, That's from correct. It. So, so I understand that at some point in the past there may have been stairs, but there'll be no stairs at this point. That's correct. Uh, was, I couldn't quite figure that out from the drawings, but thank you. Okay, I just want to clarify that. And the second thing is, um, I guess a comment. Um, I c if, if it's the appropriate time to, get to provide a comment, or should I wait for a motion, Chair? I think we'll just find out get what people qu what people have in terms of questions, and sure. then we'll have comments following a motion. Thank you. Other questions? Councillor Murdoch, please. Uh, just for my clarification, is this sorry at RS four or RS five lot? I appreciate the percentages are the same. Uh, I'm just curious in terms of the. It is. It says RS four in the plan, so. Yeah, currently RS four. Okay, RS four currently. Okay. And uh, just f uh, for my clarification through you, Chair, to the applicant, um, the deck that's here, it's sort of, uh, can you just clarify, um, the history of this is that there was a small deck and then some point there was it was built to a larger deck, uh, then they went through a renovation um, and we're, we're gonna make it larger and then that's when this, this process kicked in. So where is this at now compared to the um, the deck that was, I guess, illegally done, but existed previous to the 2016 renovation, uh, compared to the deck that was proposed at the last uh, presentation. Compare, you can just get to clarify where this fits. In sure. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. The, I'm not sure what was originally built. The plans that we have that show the original plans show a smaller deck, but larger than the deck that we had presented to. Um, the building department when we applied for building permit. Um, but we also have a drawing of the existing deck as it was built by previous owners. This is, these owners are very new. They just bought the house and then we did the renovation to it. And so the deck now is showing about a four foot removal on the left hand side of the house if you're looking out towards the water. And we are expanding slightly the, the area closer to that central area to give them a bit of a central um, area that's large enough to actually entertain some friends and sit out there and be comfortable. So it's slightly bigger than the, the original deck that was there before when they bought the house, but just bare, not, not much bigger than that. I, have, I think I have drawings of both here if you want to see them. Uh, it's I think we, we went through them in great detail last time. Yeah. I'm trying to get a sense of where this is. So it's, it's a little bigger than that. Um, I guess the, the question that I'm struggling with, and, and I'll f I think it's only fair to give you a chance to answer the question, um, you know, every house in Oak Bay has a single family house. There's no density bonus here. There's no ap you know, benefit to the community per se of rezoning to allow for a, a, a slight change. I mean, it's an it's a unfortunate side effect of when these houses are getting built to the absolute max in every direction, it makes it very hard to make what is a reasonable ask, frankly, of, of this. Um, but I'm leery of, of moving things down a, a rezoning path just for a newish house, you know, n needing some changes. So I just th figured, think I should give you the opportunity to explain your rationale for allowing a fairly new house that's been built to the max to allow a little bit more um, in this particular case. Well, <coughs> when you say fairly new, this is a built back in the 80s, I believe. 20 years, yeah. Yeah. Um, the reason I feel that way is because this particular lot um, is steep. And so the basement, because of its steepness, the lot's uh, average grade, is fully counted as square footage. And if this same house were sitting on a flat lot and the basement were considered to be a basement, we'd actually be able to expand the square footage quite a bit um, from what it is. So it's not, it, it's a technicality of how the house sits on the property that, that triggers this uh, situation. And, and as, you know, um, I'm sure but you're aware not every situation is straightforward and um, this is just one of those incidences I think that it's a minor request to make their deck slightly larger because we're encouraging people to you know renovate houses keep the house age in place and to put the deck down to the size that they're allowed to have is so small that it's it's actually um, quite quite frustrating for them to consider having to live with that small a deck and that's why we're asking for a slightly bigger one and I, I think it's quite uh, th I don't really believe it sets a precedent at all because it's a very specific unique situation here and, um, and it's not hap it doesn't happen like the house next door for instance has quite a bit larger deck and probably is at least the same square footage it's just that 
due to circumstances and how things are calculated, it, it doesn't need a variance to have the deck that it has. Uh, I, I think the second part of that, though, is of course it's also lot coverage, which it's over the maximum of lot coverage as well. So it's, I think that's a, that's another consideration here as well. That it's nothing to do with the, the slope. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And I, I think I brought up at the last meeting that if this was a one-level house, like we talked about in the the, um, the four air ratio when we changed the the uh, zoning, um, we actually increased for a one-story house the site coverage. And so again, if this were considered a basement, and this would be a considered a one-story house, the f um, site coverage would increase too. Thank you. Sorry about that disturbance. I hit the wrong button. Uh, any other questions? Questions at this point? No. Seeing no other questions, I think it's time to entertain a motion. I'd move uh, approval um, of the the application. Okay. I'd second that. Moved and seconded. It's on the floor. Discussion. Let's start with the mover and then the seconder, please. I understand the 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 fear that um, the manager of planning has expressed in her memo that uh, that this might set a precedent for other uh, people coming, you know, to request a, a rezoning for um, you know larger decks or a larger footprint. Um, but uh, and that you know people are building to the max, and that this would be just um, piling on to to encourage people to to do that. But I, I honestly don't see that happening because um, you know this is this is the the response that I'm why I'm prepared to support something like this is because it's a reasonable ask. It's not um, going to uh, impact the neighbors in a negative way. It's not impacting uh, anybody in a negative way at all, except for that it would um, encourage that family to rem remain in the house uh, a little longer because they'd be living, you know, one level living. Um, the other thing is that they're retaining the property. And I think the, the message we've heard from the community over the past few years is that people are discouraged by, um, by people tearing down houses and replacing them with um, the largest things they can build, and um, that that change it changes the the look and feel of our streetscapes. And that that message came through loud and clear at our OCP review that the streetscape is very valued. And so, um, so where I you know I understand that we don't want to see people um, building. Uh, removing green space, uh, building out to the max. I also don't want to see us losing, um, you know, older houses or, or completely viable houses um, and seeing that waste of resources with people um, replacing them with brand new houses uh, when we could, we could find an alternative. Um, so, you know, we've done our best to adjust the floor area ratio uh, through, through the committee last, um, last term. To, to adjust that zoning bylaw to make sure that things, you know, that we could retain more housing. But when it doesn't work, sometimes it doesn't work. And so when it doesn't work, I think this is a perfectly acceptable response. I n and I also think that um, this is a lengthy, difficult process. And I'm not sure very many people are going to want to go through that. It's, it wasn't an easy process. I mean, how, how long has it been that they've been working at this? More than almost a year, right? Nobody wants to go down that road if they can avoid it. So unless there is something, some kind of dramatic change uh, required, uh, unless there's some kind of dramatic change that someone's looking for, I don't, I don't see why we should object to this. Thank you. And the second of the motion, Councillor Zucker. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, I appreciate um, uh, the work done by the proponent to make adjustments. Um, to uh, uh, scale uh, it back closer to something that was uh, uh, closer to, uh, uh, I guess, what people would consider existing, whether it was legal or not, as be it as, as this may. And I appreciate the adjustments made for the uh, neighbor next door and the, uh, the whole con question about privacy and being comfortable um, so that uh, both neighbors can be comfortable in their houses. Um, I, uh, 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 if there was a, if, if, if it was a level uh, house, um, uh, sorry, a level lot, then I could uh, understand the argument, but because of the topography, uh, I don't consider this uh, um, uh, a precedent-setting exception, and I'm, I'm willing to vote in favor, but I do also want to hear from the public. Thank you. 
Yes, I had uh, kind of intended to do that once everyone here had, had had their chance to say something first time around. And then if we had any, are there any members of the public who wish to address us on this issue? All right, so it's academic. It's academic in any event. Is there anyone uh, that wish to speak to it? Councilor Braithwaite, you seem somewhat reluctant. I, I am really, <laughs> I, I, this is one a really, really tough one. Um, and, and it's tough for a number of reasons. It's tough because um, I, I like to adhere by the rules. And so I have a difficult time uh, allowing for um, an exception to that rule. Uh, but then I look at the what you've said about the um, the site that this house is on, and and I understand where you're coming from when you ask for that. But I go back to something that's already been said around the table, which is a, a caution to others who are building a house on a lot and they choose to build to the maximum size of the house. Then when they come for uh, and and uh, and ask like this to add something else on, our hands are tied, and I. I don't know whether this does set a precedent or not if we allow this, and so it's it's really, really difficult for me. I'm going to be interested to hear what the other three people around the table have to say, um, but um, right now I'm, I'm truly torn, so it'll be interesting to see what I do. All right. Um, we're both reaching. Uh, Councillor Croft, please. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Um, I, I actually find it difficult to support the application, having heard all of the arguments, both for and against. Um, I believe that we should respect what the APC has recommended, which is the decline, and I think we should hear what our staff is saying and the concerns of what could happen down the road. I do believe this is precedent setting. I do believe that it will establish impact for the community, maybe not necessarily for the community in which this property exists now, but certainly throughout the community. I do think that the owner of the property does have alternatives. They could put a staircase down and have a deck on a lower level. So there are alternatives to having some outside space. I know that they want to age in place. I've heard those stories. But I really think that in the process of how this has come to us, where we had a design that was built and then a deck started to be built after the work that had been apparently finished without coming to talk to us, I think we need to um, adhere to the rules, particularly on zoning and established neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilor Murdoch, please. Uh, thank you, through Chair. Yeah, I think this is a philosophical <laughs> question as much as anything else in terms of uh, whether to support this or not. I, um, I actually do support the process of, of rezoning um, where it has a compelling case. So I, I think the argument here is that it's a unique enough site that it's got a compelling case. Um, I, I'm not sure I entirely buy that. I don't think this is a case of retaining the property. It's it's a 1997 house, I think, was according to the original plans, and 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 built to the to the maximum of those you know pretty recent laws. I um, and it's not a case of the house is going to be just demolished. If the house was demolished, it would be built smaller than it is now. Um, the current bylaw is does not allow for a bigger house, so there's it's not there's not a lot of incentive here to tear it down. Um, I do certainly appreciate the efforts that have been made by the applicant to try and find a reasonable compromise on the deck. Uh, I think it is a reasonable compromise. The question then comes down to whether or not the bylaw, uh, the process of rezoning for a new house to add a little bit more that's reasonable uh, overrides this. Uh, and I guess I'm swayed uh, to this point by two factors, uh, and, and Councillor Croft touched on them. Um, the, the, the comments of the APC and staff, I do, I'm a, I am concerned that uh, this is not a simple process. It's difficult and lengthy for the applicant, but it's also lengthy and time consuming and so forth for the staff to have to go through this uh, every time there's an application. And, and if this is our process um, for for houses on that wanted to add to the maximum size, uh, I'm certainly concerned that that's going to be the application process. And the process here is they draft bylaws and so forth to come to us for, for consideration. So. Uh, I am swayed a fair bit by that. I also respect the, the opinions of the staff in this case that that it does uh, set a precedent and set some expectation of the community that the um, the bylaws are the bylaws, but they're they're changeable. Uh, you know, I, I see the value in this. If it's heritage, if it's retention, uh, I think we need to be very flexible in terms of how we're doing our zoning for those things. I'm not sure I buy it for this particular application. So I look forward to seeing what the other <laughs> comments are, uh, but that's sort of where I'm at right at this point. Um, can I, having heard what others have said, I'm just going to interject with a question to you, Mr. Collins. Uh, was, should this <coughs> um, application be denied, what steps would you take to bring the um, 
what steps can be taken to bring the house into compliance? They have to reduce the deck back to what we had on the original submission for our building permit, which is about a 9 by 10 foot deck. And that was what was on the original plans that were approved? Our plans that we sent in. When we, when we did our site data and measured the house, we realized that the house was built oversized. We've actually decreased the size of the house. We've removed bay windows minorly, but we've taken some things off the house that made it smaller. The deck was already bigger and was already oversight coverage. So we, because we know that, we put a smaller deck on it. And when they started to build the deck and realized how tiny it was, they said, not to us, we didn't have anything to do with when they expanded it, but they expanded the deck because they wanted to make it um, big enough that they can actually go out and live there. You see, when we talk about, yes, you can have a staircase going down to a lower level, but there's also a drop off down there also because it's a very steep lot. And we're talking about people that want to age in place, so they're hoping to be able to not have to carry things up and down a set of stairs to go down to a lower level. We're talking about master bedrooms on the main floor, kitchens on the main floor. You want to be able to go in and out on, and have some enjoyment out on a deck large enough to have, it's not huge, we're not looking for a gigantic deck, just big enough to entertain some people and, uh, and use the house the way that it was meant to be used. So that's why I think it's quite important to think about you know, the, the enjoyment of this house and the fact they renovated it, they put a lot of money into it, they um, made it a you know, very beautiful looking house on the street now. It's going to last another, I would guess, another 75 years at least. And um, <coughs> it would just be nice if they could, you know, have some outdoor space that they can enjoy. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions of Mr. Collins arising out of my questions? Yes, go ahead, please. Can I ask staff a question? Um, have we ever approved something to go over... Uh, the far before, I, as far as a single family dwelling? Uh, not, not to the best of my knowledge, we haven't. And quite frankly, I don't recall ever uh, in this situation. In fact, we had a place over in Wilmot that wanted a 100 square foot kitchen nook, and we felt we couldn't do it, uh, and we weren't prepared at that point to have it a spot zoning, and um, that's what this, re I mean, it really amounts to this, right? It's a very specialized zoning for this property and this property only. All right, uh, any, other any other comments? Because if not, I'm gonna call the question. Okay, no other comments, I see no other hands. All in favor? Opposed? Council Braithwaite, Croft, and Murdoch opposed. That motion is lost on a tie, thank you. Um, I don't think we have to do anything else at this point. Uh, it's uh, effectively a denial. That's correct. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. And and thanks. It, it, I, I echo the, uh, the the comments of Councillor Zalka, and we really appreciate the work that you did did do here and tried to uh, uh, to find a common ground, and uh, that's that's appreciated. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next item, which is item number four. Um, was also on our 18th of April um, agenda. You may recall there was a motion which is part of our package. Uh, because no applicants uh, were in attendance and there was a sense that there were some questions that needed to be asked, uh, and th it was uh, deferred to this point. Is the applicant or the applicant's representative here? Any your name and address or community, please? You're going to have to say that again with the microphone on. Thank you. My name is Mark Williams. My address is 3156 Woodburn Avenue. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. And you're the agent for the owner? That's correct. Okay. Were you also the builder or developer or whatever? Yes, I was. Thank you very much. All right. So, Ms. Jensen, could you, uh, I know you did this last time. We're just going to ask you to update uh, us. Uh, nothing has happened in between, but kind of give us a similar overview because I know Mr. Williams wasn't here last week in the, uh, or last committee of the whole. So go ahead, please. Certainly. So this is new construction at 3155 Beach Drive. Uh, this home started construction back in 2014 uh, through a number of uh, processes. Uh, they originally received approval for upland siting and design. That included a development variance permit, which varied building heights. 
in 2015, uh, there were revisions to that approved design, and then in 2016, a subsequent development permit to uh, expand the size of the deck in the rear yard. So this home is uh, substantially complete, uh, and upon uh, inspection uh, by the building inspection department, we determined that there were a number of changes made to the home that warranted coming back through uh, the council for the upland siding and design. Uh, specifically, there were multiple changes to window and door design, uh, deck railings, and window sill materials. Uh, council has in front of them a list of the proposed changes or, or changes that have been made. It has been reviewed by the advisory design panel who felt that the changes were actually beneficial. Okay, and we just see your, um, your recommendation. Um, here that it is recommended to council that the design and materials modification need the single family dwelling etc uh, be approved uh, as to architectural siting and design which accords with uh, what the advisory design panel uh, proposed all righty uh, let's see if there's any questions for um, uh, Ms. Uh, Jensen and while people are thinking about that I have a question uh, in terms of, can you, can you kind of group these together? First of all, how many changes were there? Uh, there were in excess of 50 changes. Okay. I would estimate that 90 to 95% of those changes were to do with window style. All right. So 95 were windows. Is that what you said? 95% of these were with respect to windows. Can you just group those in the... In, in for us in terms of the, the changes? How were the windows changed? Uh, the, well, there were changes to windows on all sides of the building. Uh, specifically, uh, we tended to see where they had changed the number of lights that were within the windows. So rather than having uh, six panes in there, you may see the equivalent of 12 panes. Uh, those were the bulk of the changes. There were some changes to the materials of the doors. Uh, similarly, some French doors became single pane. Uh, the door material on the side of the home was changed. There were a few windows that were added into the building. There were some decorative vents that were removed from the building. And sorry, you said some materials. Materials, uh, can you describe that a little more, please? That's correct. The, the, the majority of the change to do with the materials was around the window sills that were uh, supposed to be constructed of stone and ended up being a um, stucco covered styrofoam. Okay, alrighty. Uh, and uh, other than their recommendation, you, were you at ADP when they looked at these 50 plus changes? That is correct. And I, I see that they did recommend it. Was there any, cons any specific concerns that they raised? Uh, not particularly. There was more concern around the process rather than any of the material changes. Thank you very much. Now let's see if there's questions of Ms. Jensen on her report. Yes, Councillor Braithwaite. Thanks so much. Um, so my question is really around, uh, I guess, process as well. Um, what, um, I look at this and I wonder what, what it cost the municipality to have to go through this process. So to have to figure out that there were 50 changes that were done to the to the original plan and the time and energy that goes into that I mean do we have a cost recovery system for that at all um, I'm, I'm not sure you're I'm not, not going to suggest that you're not capable but uh, I know we've looked at this issue before in various ways of cost of applications I don't know if has anyone recently rec can recall any recent reviews we did no all right Ms. Jensen, can you help us and give us some kind of idea how much the application fee is and how does that equate with the amount of uh, time expended? Uh, what I can tell you is in October 2015, Council actually uh, adopted a new uh, land use procedures bylaw which included new fees in it. One of those was for upland siding and design which is now a $400 application fee which was not in effect before. Uh, there used to be no fee attached to those applications. Uh, as far as the time that was put in, I'd have a difficult time trying to gauge what that okay. one was. I would guess 10 to 12 hours between, right. between three staff. All right. And sorry, you, there was also revisions in 2015, uh, and earlier revisions. 
that is that would have been an application fee also of four hundred dollars at that time not at that time that was prior to the the prior to uh, the change the new changes all right all right so um does that answer your question uh, Uh, not really so i'm wondering then with these 50 changes has is there any fine that will be levied or is there an expectation that there will be another fee paid because of these 50 changes that have come up no there is not okay any other questions from Ms. Uh, Johnson Councillor Zelkin please uh, thanks so much uh, in your report um, if I may through uh, through chair to staff it mentions that there are two instances requiring further review and enforcement having to do with um, in particular the shoreline development permit area and others and some stop work order aspects uh, are, uh, with respect to uh, review enforcement penalties uh, is there any cost or any uh, dollars affos- associated with any of that work and what is the result in particular of the shoreline development permit area deficiencies please uh, there have been no fines established as a result of those two deficiencies in the one with respect to the shorelines development permit area there had been some fill placed on the the site in the foreshore area uh, and staff did work with the applicant at that time to have it removed okay that's it councillor Zelka. any other question council croft please thank you your honor uh, to uh, Ms. Jensen. Um, as your council liaison to the advisory and design panel, um, I recall that there was a bit of discussion around that the rear of the home is just as important as the front of the highly and is highly visible from the ocean. I wonder if you remember uh, what the advisory design panel was saying about the front of the home versus the back of the home. Certainly in this instance, the design panel was, uh, they, they pay, pay a lot of attention to streetscape. In this particular instance, because of the landscaping in front of the home and because the home is set back further on the site, the design panel had a discussion around the visibility of this home from the rear and out on the water and actually felt that that was uh, more of a prominent viewscape to the home than what you would see from Beach Drive. So they did have some discussion around the, the merits of the changes that had been made felt that those changes were relevant. Uh, There was a little bit of concern around the use of the glass uh, paneling for the the railing and the size of the columns with respect to that glass paneling. Okay. Councillor Croft, anything more on that? And and, and if I'm correct, um, we have glass paneling, but we also have metal railing. So we have a combination of two types of material at the back of the, at the, Seaside of the home, is that correct? That's correct. There is. There's a, the railings are glass, but the, the railings, the stair railings are, are wrought iron. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Croft. Nothing else then? We move on to Councillor Murdoch, please. Um, thank you. And I just, for my clarification, because we have to decide on this uh, today, I just want to be clear. We obviously have a siting and design um, application in front of us here I'm just trying to separate out the process which I think has been uh, problematic um, from the actual application so uh, I just I want to make sure that I'm clear here what we're deciding on tonight is because I have concerns about the process and both not just specific to this application but just in general terms of how we manage uh, complicated building projects within the uplands and making sure that we're timely and the applicants are timely and we have a process that doesn't cost everybody too much money because I think it costs both the municipality and applicants to have to change things and go through this uh, but specifically to this today just want a clarification and confirmation I guess that what's in front of us today is to approve the setting and design as it sits here right now um, and I just don't know how far we want to get into the weeds of the, of the of the process here as opposed to that and and your question is to whom and uh, you know what, maybe it's not a question maybe it's just more of an observation I th- that's what it sounded like. That's why I was trying to I'll reach leave around for that observation. What is before us uh, is this application, uh, and uh, and I would think the, the the best approach to it because we've had applications before where work was not done in accordance with what was approved, uh, and certainly on those occasions, the approach that I have taken, and they're rare very rare uh but uh you know we have two back to back as it turns out not in the uplands but uh one on uh, the the previous application 
And uh, quite often for me, it comes down to the issue of the, the, would, would, we have would we have approved this application if it come to us initially, right? Uh, I think that's a good test to apply, and that's the, the test I uh, will uh, will adopt. I don't think it's the only test that you can adopt, um, but uh, that's the one that's probably the the, uh, the shortest uh, or the, the simplest. I not shortest, simplest. So, Councillor Murdoch, I don't know if that helps at all. Or no, that's great. I, I the only question I have is to the applicant, uh, specific to the siting and design was. There was something noted in here that rear stairs uh, in the original plans were later or north stairs were not built. Can you just explain what I think it was rear stairs? Can you explain the change and why that took place? I'm not sure what you mean. Rear stairs were not built. Yeah, the summary of modifications. I'm sorry, I left the page. <laughs> Always a dangerous thing. Um, do you, Do you have the materials that we have in front of us, Mr. Williams? No. Well, they were, they were available online, but unfortunately. Yeah. There, there is a main staircase coming down the cent down from the center of the, the rear patio, and, and that was, okay, just that was shown on the original. Just we're yeah. just going to find out. Okay. So it's just on the north elevation. It says there were, uh, oh. No rear stairs. Okay, it's just reversed it's the rear stairs. Okay, it's okay. It's fine. Okay, so okay, there's no question there, okay. so you don't have to answer a no question. Uh, but we're still questioning at this point um, Ms. Jensen and, and staff. And then what we're going to do next, Mr. Williams, is ask you and uh, in terms of how we, how we got here in terms of what was, what was approved and, and what was built. So and that's the main question that's before us tonight. Um, or a subsidiary question to that earlier question I asked. Councillor Zaka, please. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm musing as well about process, and if you'll just uh, indulge me for a moment uh, as, we, as I can get my thoughts to okay. the main question that's uh, before us. Um, you know, the Uplands is a very special place, and uh, under provincial um, uh, act, a special act was passed by the, by the province of British Columbia called the Oak Bay Special Powers Act in 1935. <coughs> and not... It's, it, it's surprising how many people don't know that, uh, that this act allows us very special provisions um, that's not allowed anywhere in British Columbia except for the city of Vancouver. <coughs> it allows us, uh, by, by regulation and by act, to um, regulate and prescribe the class, minimum cost, and location of buildings in the uplands, provide for the approving of council on site and architectural design of buildings, limiting the number of buildings on any lot, prescribing the purpose for which the building may be used and prohibiting the erection, construction, maintenance, and use of buildings which do not comply with regulations, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, further on in this 1935 Act, it also allows us to enforce uh, any such regulations may be enforced and contravention restrained by the Supreme Court upon action brought by the said corporation of the District of Oak Bay, et cetera, et cetera. Um, highly unusual that we have these powers, but we have them. Um, I think uh, uh, the, the government of the day really wanted to ensure that the specialness of Oak Bay, uh, specialness in particular of the uplands was maintained. So um, <coughs> I, 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 I recognize that this is a, a uh, unique thing that we need to protect uh, carefully. Thank you. Oh, was there not a question? I thought you were, you were going to... I'm just making a point for consideration. Okay. Okay. So there's no further questions of our staff. So, Mr. Williams, um, we we, um, we deferred it last time from April 18th to today because we wanted to hear uh, from the owner slash the applicant slash you, to, to mm -hmm. someone who in the know. And I, I think some of the questions is how these changes came to came to be, and what the thinking behind it. And, and in particular, you had come back in 2015 for the revisions, which were right. permitted, and uh, what happened between 2015. In terms of these changes, how did that? What was the evolution? Right. Of these this changes? was sorry. Th this was a very complicated, difficult project for me. This was very owner-driven. Um, these people really knew what they wanted from the beginning. Okay. Uh, the, or the original uh, design, which was passed by design panel, was a little bit too large, mm -hmm. um, so we had to get an architect involved. Yep. That was the 2015 then revisions, was uh, it? We, yeah, we had to get an architect involved, which the owners didn't want to do in the beginning. Uh, that architect suggested some changes to them and essentially pushed them into agreeing to, to make some changes. 
after the architect was no longer involved in the project, they looked at these changes again and realized that it wasn't really what they wanted. Um, as was noted, the majority of these changes, it's, it's a difference in, in just the number of bars in a window. So because it's a, right on the water, they wanted to minimize the bars. So where there were 12 or six lights before, we had four. Where, where there were 12, we had eight or something like that. So it, it, the owners, uh, can, so it, uh, bottom line is this is what the owners wanted and they felt very strongly about it. Um, they felt, um, right or wrong, that these were minor changes that were outside the scope of the design panel and that that form and character was what the design panel was about and they didn't feel that these ch these changes were going to impact the form and character of the building so and and that the, the uplands would be would be protected as it should be from from anything that wasn't suitable okay to, so to form areas. and character you mean the size the shape sure, yeah, the massing materials form and character that sort of thing I mean, some, something like the window sills i mean that you wouldn't be able to see tell that unless until you unless you walked up and touched them i mean it it uh, these are these are minor details and uh, i think one of the most significant changes um, was this window at the front, which again was was approved on our original submission, and then on the on the architect changed it. They didn't like it, so we changed it back to what was previously approved. So the original one, right? So mm -hmm. that was the one that I thought might be of concern, but because it had been approved already by the design panel, I mm. didn't think it was it was worth everybody's time to to revisit it. So okay. All right, thank you very much. And we see that the advisory design panel did, did has recommended it be approved. Let's see if there's any questions for Mr. Williams, please. Okay. Oh, yes, Councillor Murdoch, please. Well, the only other significant change, obviously, was the uh, the patio rail or the patio uh, rail That's type. Right. Was, uh, could you just explain the reasons for that change? Sure. This was a very time sensitive project for them. Um, the project was delayed for a few reasons, um, and it, they were in a real hurry to get it done. The wrought iron railings were going to be an additional six weeks, um, and they decided that when they were sitting in their living room, they didn't want to look through the wrought iron, so they <laughs> instructed me to, to go ahead with the glass. So, And, and th those wrought iron changed to glass was also in front of the ADP, Ms. Jensen? That was known to the ADP? Pardon me. It was not known to the ADP at the time that they went through the second set of revisions. It has been included in the revisions you have in front the of you. The most recent ones. That's correct. That's what, that's what I meant. Okay. Okay. No other questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. Appreciate uh, you coming. Is there any members of the public who wish to address us on this issue? Okay. I see none. Uh, you can turn off your microphone there, Mr. <laughs> Williams. Thank you. Now, we uh, entertain a motion, please. Move approval. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. Councillor Braithwaite, please. Um, thanks. I, I, I have, I totally understand what you, where you were coming from when you said that, um, that you want to look at these things through a lens as if you would have approved it if it had come to us to begin with. And I, and I don't disagree with that. What I disagree with is the fact that um, when something like this happens, um, to me, it makes it, it, if if you don't come with your approvals to council, which you had known that you had to come prior to this for approvals. If you don't come with approvals, then that means that when your next door neighbor does come with approvals, uh, lo looking to seek um, approval for changes to a design, and if we said no, then they would walk away not being able to do those appro approvals. You've come basically. Um, even though they're minor, and I understand that, but you've come basically having already done them. So it almost makes a scoff law out of what our bylaws are, in my, in my humble opinion. Um, and it, it also, um, to me, um, causes staff to go through a lot of angst to have to um, go through all the motions to bring this back to council. And, and I mean, as we've heard, there was a lot of staff time that, that was um, taken up with it. What I'd really like to see is a process where for minor uh, minor changes like this, you could just go to staff and not have to have it come to council for something minor as as, as far as a window goes. So um, I, I'd really like to see some, and that's on our um, that's on our plates, is to, to, to try and look at something like that to see if we can have something like that happen. Um, but in the meantime, um, I I would agree that the design looks better. Um, I would agree that um, you know really I in the in the scope of things, the changes are kind of minor, um, but there's so many of them that happened that I honestly feel that I have to vote against the motion 
um, because I think that you should have come and asked for approval um, for these changes um, rather than um, coming and seeking permission for afterwards. So I'm going to be voting against the motion. Okay, help me so. All right, any other points? Because then I'm going to call a question. Councillor Kirby, did you have your hand up? And then Councillor Selka, please. Sure. Um, I, uh, given that the, the uh, advisor design panel um, uh, agreed that these were improvements to the project um, and the I think the final result is that we have a have a substantial house that um, I'd be surprised if 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 it could be done without some error uh, in you know that that it's a it's a very large project um, and uh, you know I I think all things considered the process was was uh, flawed uh, not necessarily the best uh, best process but um, you know and it's unfortunate that it's taken up staff time I think that's and that it's now taking up council time two agendas you know that that could have been spent doing other things um, but uh, that aside I think in the end result is that we have a, you know a very uh, attractive house that's you know um, one of the the uh, main you know that's a, the, a big part of the waterfront view and it's it's attractive and as long as they continue to respect that shoreline uh, and and I think that education is in place now that they that they uh, they understand that we want to maintain and sustain our um, our shoreline um, native plants and and the the uh, the foreshore is, is there for everybody um, I think that that this process has, has, you know, helped them to understand the, how important that is to us um, as a community. That maybe, maybe, you know, um, there's not a lot we can do now. I mean, it'd be nice if we could go back and change the process, but unfortunately, th I think the end result is that that you know, it's still it's a beautiful house in the end. And so I'm going to support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Salka, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. A, a question through you to uh, staff. Um, uh, I was under the impression that a, a house above a certain size was required to have an engineer or architect, um, and this house appears to be pretty large. Could could uh, could I get some clarity on that, please? Because I understand this house did not, for quite some time, not have a, a, a professional engineer or an, or an architect. Just Ms. Jensen. No, it is under the required size, so they could move forward as was, as is. I, I'm sorry, it's under the the size. Are you, uh, uh, please clarify. 600 square meters would then require professional stamp. And this house is? Um, under 600 meters, square meters. <laughs> I don't as long as it's under, then it, uh, then it, it doesn't require a, an architect. And I don't think that's not our requirements, by the way. That's the architectural um, Yes, the, uh, that, that's, that's really the point I was board, trying to say. Yeah. Um, I, I, um, so th uh, thank you for that clarity through uh, through you to staff. Um, I, um, I I'm I'm torn on this uh, property. Um, I, uh, I I'm afraid I'll be voting uh, uh, against um, uh, the uh, the motion. Thank you very much. I think we're ready for the question, except two other hands, Councillor Croft and Councillor Murdoch. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I I will be voting in favor of the motion. Uh, the only thing that I would like the owner to consider is making the seascape consistent either glass or wrought iron okay that's not going to be part of the motion that's just a friendly request thank you councillor murdoch uh, I, I i hear the concerns being raised and i understand them i think this for me comes down to the fact that if we were sitting here at committee of the whole and this application came towards us and we're showing this this design and the advisory design panel's recommendation to approve, I could think of no reason that I would at this table say that's not good enough and I would refuse it. Um, so I'm going to go with the same uh, measure of test of whether it's reasonable or not. I, I could see no reason for that. I can't see that the process itself would change that, um, that that would require changes to the design of the house. So I'm going to support the motion. And that's the test I articulated earlier and that's the one I intend to apply. We're ready for the question. All in favor? Opposed, Councillor Zelka and Councillor Braithwaite opposed, it passes. Thank you very much and all the best for that house. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is number five, right across the street, 413140 Beach Drive. And uh, the owner has a, I 
uh, his uh, designer here, the architect. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. you state your name, please. Uh, James Grieve. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, and let's hear from um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Jensen on this one. Uh, as you mentioned, this property is directly across the street from the previous application. The proposal is for a two-story single-family home with an accessory building and in-ground swimming pool. Uh, similar uh, in style to across the street, staff consider it to be uh, distinct enough that it qualified uh, for its for its siting, um, proposing stoneworks, um, wood doors. It's having an impact on two Gary Oak trees that are on the site, one that's directly within the building footprint and another that's directly adjacent to the terrace. The owners are proposing to plant uh, an additional 32 trees, uh, two, two of which are Gary Oaks and one existing Gary Oak to be retained at the rear of the site. Thank you very much. Any questions from Ms. Jensen? Seeing none. Uh, any? Yep. Nope. I'm seeing one. Councillor Zelko. Question. Thank you so much. A question through you to staff with respect to the uh, the, the driveway that's being sorry the driveway the um, the garage that's being proposed. Um, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make it to the site uh, visit this morning, uh, but I understand that it's it's kind of mirroring the property to the north, in terms of uh, of, of distance from uh, the road. Uh, that's what it looks like in the in the in the diagram. I just wanted to confirm that uh, that that with respect to how close that uh, garage in the front of the of the design is, uh, how how close it is to the road with respect to the house next door. So the the relative setbacks. Rel yes, that's I, I can tell the setbacks fairly easily. Okay. Thank you. There w I I attended the site today and uh, there was some talk about that. Yeah, sorry, I don't have those exact measurements with me, but they are in relative alignment with each other. The difference with this one in that the, the front door of the garage is, is set 90 degrees from the street, so you actually wouldn't see the garage doors. <coughs> but the, the facade of the garage facing the street is approximately the same distance from the road allowance as the house next door? It's very close, That's yes. That's what I wanted to find out. Yeah, in to the... To the north. Yes, to the north. Mm -hmm. The one to the south is interesting enough, set back quite a bit more, but the ones to the north tend to be in closer alignment with this one as you're going towards Cadborough Bay. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from Ms. Jensen or staff? No, thank you very much. Oh, go ahead, to Councillor Murdoch, please. Well, it's sort of a follow on to that. Um, just in terms, I'm trying to, and perhaps it's better said to the applicant, honestly. Um, just the the relative uh, setback of the of the front face of the house relative to the houses around it. Uh, it's a it's a it's an appropriate house design from what I can see for the for the area. Um, where these things kind of tend to live and fail sometimes is just if they're too close, they seem looming. If they're too far set back, they seem disconnected. So I'm just curious about you know the setback here. It looks uh, substantial substantially closer than the existing house to the to the side of it to the north side. Um, but if you could just maybe, if I could get some clarification in terms of that, that siting. Yeah, the, s the single story garage structure, which presents a facade of roughly 28 feet, uh, is 35 feet from the boundary. Uh, there's an interconnecting uh, mudroom utility area. The main body of the house is back approximately 70 feet from the road. And then there's an inset to the center of the structure where we get to the, the formal entrance to the building. and and the deck structure, which is basically implying a porte cochet, but it's not in fact for that part particular application. S just for clarification, you said 70 feet from the road. Is it 70 feet from the road or 70 feet from the property Sorry, line? Sorry, 70 feet from the property line. Okay, that's a significant and difference, uh, though. Thank you. And the, uh, I should point out, too, that the alignment of the garage is to a certain degree obscured by that rather splendid Gary Oak tree, which is on the boulevard. And, uh, and I'll touch on the two oak trees that were commented on by Ms. Jensen. Uh, these aren't small specimens. I sourced a fellow in Washington State who's been salvaging and rescuing mature Gary Oaks since 1990. He f has them hand dug, set into the ground. They're fed and watered by lines. And he puts them one through one full growth cycle. And in transplanting, he's had no failures, period since 1990. The guy's a national treasure. I'm just hoping he holds 
folds up and uh, his health doesn't fail because it's the, the, the trees he's got are astounding and all the phytosanitary certificates are ready to roll and we have people on this end to address that. Thank you. Thank you. Can be done. Any other questions, Mr. Murdoch? Any other questions for Todd? Uh, does anyone want to hear from Mr. Grieve and, uh, or have any questions for him about the property? Okay, then I'd entertain a motion, move, please. Move approval. Second. second. Move and second. Discussion. Please go ahead, please. I appreciate you mentioning that because the, uh, the about the trees because the uh, the two Gary Oaks that are there don't look too They're good. They're not very healthy, no. No, um, so I have concern about their longevity, but the... Um, the siting of the, the new oaks would would be uh, a little better because they're, um, you know, just might might be I don't know, but I'm concerned about the, the amount of water on the site, um, and whether you're going to have uh, issues with that because it looks like there's almost like marshy. Uh, there's there's water uh, that shows up that does have to be addressed. Um, the builder has had uh, involvement on the part of uh, soils engineers. And obviously, we were in discussion with the structural engineers right from the onset. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we appreciate that this is very high priority. Mm -hmm. I'm just concerned about the, the for the trees. Maybe that's why those Gary Oaks are failing in the first place is because there's so much water on the site. I don't know. Well, I wondered about that, too. But then I realized that on the same level out towards the street, we've got this phenomenal specimen, mm -hmm. which is, I would say, probably a good 300 to millimeters in diameter at, you know, a meter off the ground. For some reason or other, it's thriving. Right. So that may be specific local drainage that uh, we need to have a look at. Right. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the gentleman <laughs> from Washington State is, shall we say, firm in his opinions on how these trees have to be planted and how they have to be maintained. And the fellows on this end who would be addressing that have done uh, mature transplants for uh, Westminster, UBC, and they've been working in this environment for, I'd say, 10, 12 years. So I, I'm confident that we can keep them rolling. And you can create specific drainage vignettes which allow control for the microenvironment of the tree. And okay. there's, there's a lot of plant material that we're not aware of that's basically below our sight lines because they're so small, but they're contributors to the health of the tree as well. So soil development is, is really important for those particular specimens. I um, appreciate that. And I just wanted to also make sure that, um, I, like when we looked at the site today, um, uh, there was mention of, I think, 32 trees on, that are going to be planted on the property. But what we, we talked about was that um, that they're not the kind of trees that um, that will replace or improve the canopy um, for no, that that's site. The oak trees will be largely responsible for that. And there will be some, uh, we can call them decorative specimens, which, which do contribute visually from the street and mm -hmm. from the neighborhood. But uh, the owner's quite an enthusiastic garden and he wants to put in a number of fruit trees and uh, basically <laughs> farm <laughs> his, uh, his back 40, if I can put it that way. Okay, good. I and so that would help also with the with the uh, with the water issue too, oh right? Absolutely. If you've got they a they got a lot of trees, moisture. yeah. So that's great. I just wanted to make sure that we we um, um, reinforce the message that that you know loss of Gary Oaks and and tree canopy is a very uh, big problem in Oak Bay, especially well, yeah. on private property, and in the uplands. Is we we want to encourage people to uh, to replant and replace anything that's removed within the building envelope um, and and uh, you know despite the fact that this does require you to replace um, you know we just want to make sure that um, people are educated and informed that that is a real goal of the community Absolutely. and and that we really truly treasure and value our urban forest and so um, if, if you can encourage I mean obviously they're choosing large specimens which is they, fantastic. They are sensitive and they understand that there's a serious expense involved but what we can't buy is time. So if we can take a tree that was perhaps in jeopardy because of highway project or you know, commercial or school development, it should almost be a crime to take those trees out without making an effort to rehouse them. Mm -hmm. it's, it, we're squandering resources because we won't slow down and bite the bullet and deal with things in the here and now. Mm -hmm. 
So you can't move the trees that are there, I guess, eh? Not very successfully. There, if, if there were healthier specimens, I would say it's worth a shot. Mm -hmm. I worked with a wonderful landscaper years ago, and he moved a 30-foot tall camellia tree on a piece of property, peeled it in. Construction went on for a little over a year, and when it was right, he replanted it in a more appropriate area. The thing's been thriving for the last 18 years. That's great. But, yeah. uh, but he was deadly careful about true orientation, so north was set for the tree. That was repeated when it was laid in. And then when it was finally planted, everything was optimized for its health. And it just uh, took off like gangbusters. That's great. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any other points anyone wants to make? Any members of the public? Now there's only three left. All righty. I, uh, bo I bored them to death. <laughs> any other, no other comments? All in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you very much, Mr. Green. Appreciate it. Now we we have one unknown person in the audience, so he, he must either be on six or seven. We'll find out in a minute. Uh, number six, 1918 Crescent Road. Sounds like he's on that one. Thank you very much. Uh, a, a quick uh, overview. Uh, maybe you state your name, sir. Sean Burton. Okay. Welcome. If you, yep, that's good there. Just in time. <laughs> well, that's good on you, because not all of us have a comfy chair here. Uh, Ms. Jensen, a uh, high-level overview, please. Certainly. This application for a development variance permit is for a large lot on the north side of Crescent Road, just east of Fowl Bay Road. Uh, it currently houses a single-family home that was constructed in 1945. The applicant is proposing to remove that house and subdivide the property into two lots. They meet the requirement for minimum lot area, but variances are required for the minimum lot width for each lot. Uh, the required width is 15.25 meters, and the applicant is proposing 13.05 and 12.82 meters, respectively. In essence, it's wide enough at the front, but because of the pie shape, it's too narrow at the back. That is correct. But in terms of the surface area, it uh, is significantly above what's required? That is correct. Thank you very much. And, sir, your role in this, are you the owner or the, the subdivider? Or I'm the owner, yes. You're the owner. Okay, welcome. Uh, any questions for staff? No questions from Councillor Zelka and anybody else? No? Okay, thank you. Go thank ahead. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I noticed in the report, it's uh, the suggestion through for Advisory Planning Commission is uh, a recommendation that there be a shared driveway to uh, uh, help to preserve trees, amongst other things. Just wanted to know uh, um, uh, staff's uh, uh, view on that and whether we know the proponent's view on that, please. Ms. Jensen. Uh, there currently is a driveway running up the east side of the proposed lot B that leads into the house uh, at the rear. Uh, there was, there has been some discussion about that proposed lot B sharing the driveway with that house to alleviate further construction of a driveway on lot B. Having said that, they are entitled to access should they choose to go that route. So it's a matter of advocacy rather than requirement. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Is there any questions of the applicant? No other questions. I entertain a motion, please. Move approval. Second. Moved, seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, go ahead. I just wanted to say that this is a, a really good um, example of of how we can densify our our community, and I think you've done a good job, and I appreciate the fact that you've kept the, the lots so equal on the frontage, so thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Zalko, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. A uh, question uh, through you to the proponent. Um, have, uh, uh, is it possible to uh, save the house by possibly lifting it and turning it 90 degrees and putting it back down? Yeah, we actually talked to Nickel Brothers to see if it could be removed and uh, moved somewhere else initially. They said it wasn't a candidate for uh, moving, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, before I call a question, any one of the three members remaining in the audience wish to address us on this issue? Seeing no one coming forward, we're ready for the question. All in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you very much. And uh, you have the development variance permit. Um, no, not quite, sorry. Uh, council will consider issuing the permit at the council meeting on June the 12th.
That's better. Yeah, because we're not, we can't issue you the permit here. It's because we're in committee of the whole. Sorry, I just remembered that a second after I said it. And I, and, and I fell under the gaze of Mr. Jones. <laughs> I, it was the heat <laughs> that gave it away. All right, another development variance permit application, which uh, if granted would also have to come back on June the 12th. Correct. Thank you. And uh, identify yourself, sir, the applicant. Uh, my name is Ryan Hoyt. I'm the designer here on behalf of the owners. Thank you very much. And if you could put your name and the home community on that list. Ms. Jensen, overview, please. Certainly, this is a single family home along uh, Bowker that was constructed in 1908. Uh, council considered a uh, variance application in 2010 that was approved through development variance permit number 39, and that was for construction of a detached garage. It was for distance between buildings and structures, so reducing the width between the garage and the house itself. Uh, at some point in time, there was a single-story addition put onto the rear of the house without appropriate permits. The applicants are now proposing to remove that addition and in the same footprint construct a new two-story addition as well as an expanded deck out to the rear. Uh, because it is in alignment with the existing detached garage uh, and in is increasing that, that variance between the two buildings, we are looking for a variance for the new sections of the building. Same thing for distance between buildings and structures, running from 3 meters down to 1.25. Thank you very much. Questions from Ms. Jensen? Seeing none, the applicant is here. We have his documents in front of us as well as Ms. Jensen's report. Any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, entertain a motion, please. Move approval. Seconded. Moved, seconded. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. That was easy. We need one of those buttons from uh, Staples. You say that was easy. Thank you very much. Move and, adjournment. And uh, yours will be on the 12th, uh, June the 12th agenda, actually. Thank you. Move and seconded to adjourn. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Tony. Good to see you all here.